On March 4th, a giant container ship named the Ever Given left the port of Ningbo, China, which is just south of Shanghai. The Ever Given flies under the flag of Panama, but is owned by the Evergreen Marine Corporation, a really big Taiwanese container transportation and shipping company. Evergreen owns 39 of these vessels, with 20 of them named in this format of Ever plus a word that starts with the letter G, like these. In the case of this ship, it's longer than not only aircraft carriers, but it's even longer than the Empire State Building is tall, and weighs in at 200 metric tons. And over the next week, the Ever Given would go down the Asian continent, making stops at Taipei and Taiwan, then further down to Yangshan, China, which is next to Hong Kong, then all the way down to a port in Malaysia. From there, it would start its 10-day journey out at sea all the way to the Gulf of Aden at the Horn of Africa, then up the Red Sea, all the way to the Suez port at the south end of the Suez Canal on March 22nd. The Suez Canal is one of the most important trade routes in the world. March 23rd, 3.11 AM local time. The Ever Given is outside the Suez Canal waiting for its turn to travel through it. While waiting for around the next three hours, the Ever Given sailed in a unique path that resembled, well, take a look for yourself. This path was tracked by the website VesselFinder.com. When asked about this, they were adamant that the ship's tracking data was accurate and that there is no room for some kind of conspiracies or false data. Did the captain of this ship draw this path on purpose? Who knows? There were reports of strong wind and dust storms in this area around the same time, and it took three hours to sail this path. So if this was done on purpose, he must have been very dedicated to create this image. After completing that wonderful drawing, at around 7.15 AM local time, the Ever Given entered into the south entrance of the Suez Canal. Four kilometers into the canal and everything is normal. But then things get a little squirrely. 7.35 AM, the vessel starts wobbling right to left. Two minutes later at 7.37 AM, the vessel stops wobbling but finds itself making a hard left. One minute later, 7.38 AM, Ever Given is on the verge of slamming against the left side of the canal, so the ship counters with a hard right, setting it on a path back to the center of the canal. One minute later at 7.39 AM, things seem back on track, but the ship doesn't seem to be straightening out. And by 7.42 AM, the Evergreen has reached the point of no return and isn't able to stop turning right, and it rams into the eastern barge of the canal. Its sheer momentum leaves the rear of the ship swinging up, and it takes an entire two agonizing minutes for the rear of the behemoth to collide with the other side of the canal, and the Suez Canal was left at a standstill. Now, when you have 200,000 metric tons moving at a few miles an hour, that's an incredible amount of momentum of energy. And so it, when it lodges in the side, that's, you know, it's lodged in there. The Suez Canal is the connecting link between two giant economies, Europe and Asia that allow ships to not have to sail all the way around Africa, which adds around two weeks to their trips. Which is why the Suez Canal accounts for 12% of global trade, nearly a third of global container ship traffic, with 52 ships passing through it every day, valued at $9.6 billion a day. But in the span of just 7 minutes, one of the most important trade routes is shut down, 12% of global trade grinds to a halt, at the cost of $400 million every hour. The great news is that you don't have to build something massive like the Suez Canal to make a lot of money. That's where Trends comes in. Trends makes finding the next big thing easy. With a Trends membership, you can browse thousands of vetted business ideas you can launch in no time, thanks to a helpful community of like-minded hustlers. There are too many Trends success stories to cite, but I personally enjoyed reading about Craig's nerdy nuts. When Craig joined Trends, he asked for honest feedback and got roasted. Like even more roasted than his own peanuts kind of roasted. But like all good entrepreneurs, he listened and pivoted. And thanks to the advice of the Trends community, Nerdy Nuts is now a million dollar a year company and is even being hailed as the Ben & Jerry's of peanut butter. How nuts is that? That was a horrible joke. Stick to the end to learn more or stop what you're doing right now, pause the video and get your first week of Trends for just $1 by going to trends.co slash jaketrend right now. The link is on the screen and in the video description below. Initially, they estimated that it would take around a week to get the ship out, but that estimation quickly grew to at least a few weeks and the traffic jam grew. At one point, over 350 vessels were caught in the traffic jam, all of which had this stuff on board. Some ships had to quickly resort to taking the long trip around Africa, adding around 15,000 miles and two weeks to their journey. And as with anything, the biggest problems in the world make for the greatest memes. So the natural question is, what made the ship crash? 
At first, the crash was blamed on bad weather. It was windy, there was a dust storm that killed visibility, which may very well be the cause. But by day 5, authorities said, Strong winds and weather factors were not the main reasons for the ship's grounding. There may have been technical or human errors. People also started to say that there was a power outage on the ship. And since giant ships need power steering, once the power cut off, the ship was left rudderless. The ship uh, goes into the Suez Canal and it had a blackout, its power went out. And so it just kept cruising without being able to control the steering because there's like friggin' power steering on these massive ships. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like they don't have like a wire connected to the rudder. And now they think it's going to take another week or two before they'll be able to kind of dig all around the sand and tugboat the thing out of there. But until we get some clearer answers, one thing is clear. The balance of the world can flip within minutes. A small power outage on a boat on a ship, you know, uh, in the middle of, um, uh, of the Suez Canal can suddenly block up so much of global trade and cause, you know, massive fluctuations in commodity prices and availability of supplies and products for businesses around the world. There's going to be rippling economic effects. Shipping used to be very complicated and expensive. Before standardized containers, since pallets and crates were all different sizes, it made things very labor intensive and inefficient. And it didn't make sense to ship most things overseas. But by the 1970s, the 20-foot shipping container became the standard. And from that point on, the world economy was forever changed. Ports became way more efficient as containers were adopted, and the cost to ship goods shot way down, with modern ports being able to move around 70 containers per crane per hour. No longer did it matter where you produce things because transport costs became irrelevant. And that's why this was the point where production began to migrate elsewhere to countries with cheaper labor, with the epicenter being China. And since then, the number of containers moved around the world has increased almost every year since 2000. Or in other words, shipping containers have become the main part of the lifeblood of the modern economy. And with the pandemic already putting strain on shipping, a new round of stimulus checks out, the Suez Canal crash happened at the worst possible time. Since the Suez Canal mainly connects Europe and Asia, initially there were a lot of fears that it would disrupt the global supply chain, from everyday goods you can buy in the store to oil. This could range from toilet paper, coffee, furniture, gas. And with the new round of stimulus checks, people have more money to spend on what could potentially be a delayed supply. But by day 7, the ship was finally freed. And even if it wasn't freed for a while, it probably wouldn't have been that bad because at the end of the day, it is still only 12% of global trade which is a lot but not the end of the world and ships can always sail around Africa in the meantime at the cost of an extra two weeks and maybe pirates, as some of them started doing. But what you should worry about is just how fragile our delicate world really is. But I think what's interesting, so 10% of global trade moves through the Suez Canal, and about 100 of these massive ships a day move through this canal. But it really highlights the fragility of our global supply chain. Similar to kind of the experience I think we had during the COVID pandemic when all of a sudden things since the start of the Industrial Revolution, and it really dates back to the Agricultural Revolution, everything in society has only gotten more concentrated, more centralized. We went from nomadic tribes spread out across the land, to centralized civilizations centered around farming. Centralized farming villages evolved into even more centralized cities, factories, and governments. Which leads us to today, where we've optimized everything to be the lowest cost possible, but at the expense of any robustness in our global economy where one random dust storm or power outage can cause our global trade to drop over 10% in a matter of minutes, where one bad storm can cause a state's centralized power grid to shut down in the middle of winter, where one pandemic can destroy the PPE and pharmaceutical supply chain. The global industrial revolutions were really predicated on this notion of centralization. But the problem with centralization, generally speaking, in supply chains is exactly this, which is you, you have a supply chain that is much more delicate. It is much more, I mean, think about the difference in power, right? If the power goes out at a power plant, all the homes that are connected to it lose power versus if every home had their own power generator or solar cells, they could continue to support themselves. The world as it stands is very fragile. And when you look at it through this lens, isn't it just amazing that we've somehow not only survived, but thrived this long without blowing ourselves up? It's incredible. So hopefully an event like this wakes us up to the need to decentralize. And I'm not just talking about blockchain, but for us to become more robust in every part of our world, from the digital to the physical. 
So much of our global supply chain for industry has become centralized by finding the lowest cost possible, but it loses all of its durability. We were so concerned about short-term profit maximization that we offshored our entire pharmaceutical production and PPE manufacturing to China, which then said that they might ration it to us based on you know geopolitical concerns. No, thank so, you. So yeah, that is penny wise and pound foolish. The absolute definition. Is the, is the infrastructure... Huge problems like this in the world mean huge business opportunities for you to capitalize on. That's where Trends comes in. As a Trends member, you'll receive alerts called signals about up and coming business trends months or even years before they become mainstream news. This is my favorite part of Trends because it spares you the feeling of regret of not knowing about the next big thing sooner, which is a feeling that I know all too well. As a subscriber, you'll also get private access to their super helpful community of makers enabling you to network and collaborate with over 15,000 ambitious and successful people all rooting for your success. Like this guy who found a number of great angel investors through Trends and says that Trends has paid for its membership fee back 100x. The next big wave is on the horizon. Don't miss it. So stop what you're doing right now, pause the video, and get your first week of Trends for just $1 by going to trends.co slash jaketrend right now. The link is on the screen and in the video description below. There's no commitment, no catch, and you can cancel anytime. Again, that's trends.co slash jaketrend with the link below. Welcome to the Watch the End Club. It's been a really long time since I've said that. The podcast you saw throughout this video is called the All In Podcast. It's one of the only podcasts that I really enjoy listening to. They're at like 65k subs, so they're definitely a hidden gem on YouTube, and I would link it below for you guys to check out, and let's help them get to 100k. Let them know that I sent you in their comment section. If you are new here, we make video essays just like this one every single week on the most provocative, thought-provoking stuff in the world of business, so you might as well subscribe because it's free, and you can always dislike, unsubscribe, and leave me your best hate comments in the comments below. All the memes that I shared in this video, I share them in real time when I find them on my Instagram. We have a great time over there. So if you want more business memes and world event memes, you can follow me at jaketrend.io. Link below. Anyways, that's going to wrap up this video, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. You've been awesome. I've been Jake. Stay dangerous out there, and I will see you guys in the next one.